So exciting announcement today. Mark, talk us through the detail. What is it exactly that you're announcing today? Well, hello, Katie. What we're announcing today is a transaction that is financially and strategically compelling. You know, it's one of those rare transactions, isn't it? It's one of those transactions where the two companies fit together with almost surgical precision. One where we complement each other's strengths and we seem to cancel out each other's weaknesses. Well, that sounds, you know, as if everybody's in a winning position, but tell us a little bit more about the detail. You say it's compelling from a financial perspective. Well, let's look at the financial, key financial metrics here. This transaction provides Aviva with about £600 million of additional cash flow. That's good. It brings our leverage down to around about a double A range on an S&P basis. That's good too. On top of that, you have synergies, around about £225 million of synergies that adds to the value of both companies. Now, how about from a strategic perspective? What's it actually going to do for Aviva? Well, strategically, I, I like looking at transactions financially first, but they also must be compelling strategically. And if you look strategically, there's quite a long list, isn't there? You can start with just the combined customer base. Those customer bases together uh, could be up to about 16 million customers, that just in the UK alone. But look at the wider context. We've said before we wanted to be the British champion. This is our home base. We must secure our home base, and this certainly does it. I'd love to talk to you more in a little moment about the strategic uh, implications of this deal. But first, Andy, let's hear from you. What's going to be the upside for Friends Life? Well, obviously, this is a paper-based transaction, so Friends Life shareholders will get to benefit from the very attractive cash flow plus growth investment thesis of the enlarged group. And more specifically, in terms of the financial benefits, uh, the Friends Life shareholders will benefit from a, it was a 28% premium when we made the original announcement, plus on top of that, they'll get a final dividend of 24.1 pence, so that's 10 pence more, uh, and also they'll get the value share settled as well and uh, no longer have that as a, as, a, as a drag on potential future value. You mentioned dividend. Mark, what's in it for the Aviva dividend? Well, the dividend, we've added a lot of clarity to our shareholders today. What we've said is we're putting our final dividend up by 30% to 18.1 pence. I think that adds a lot of clarity. Now, a question that I think everybody wants to know is quite how this came about. And in fact, you know what, Mark, did this have to happen? Is this a deal that had to happen for Aviva? Did you need to do it? No, far from it. I think if you have a look at our progress over the last two years, I think the results speak for themselves. We've clearly delivered more than we thought we would at the start and certainly more than the market thought we would. And, and that's been helpful. But I would characterise it like this. If you are growing a garden and you're carrying a bucket to a well each day to get water, the garden can be bountiful and green, can't it? But if all you're doing that, you find a garden hose that provides all the water you would possibly need and you can get it at a faster rate, well, I think you'd be foolish not to turn on the tap. I, I, I agree with that. I think, you know, for both sets of shareholders, attractive future stand alone, even more attractive together. And I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the attraction of the deal from my perspective. And so the hose pipe analogy is a good one for friends' life too, right? <laughs> Indeed. Not that I'm a gardener, but yeah. <laughs> A lot of people in the past, though, have picked up on the fact, Mark, that, uh, you know, the Aviva strategy that you've set out over the last couple of years has been to not be too UK-centric. And, of course, this is absolutely that. I mean, is this just the start of a, a bigger strategy going overseas or, or is it a bit of a U-turn? Well, let's be very clear. This is absolutely consistent with our strategy. What I've said is we're about cash flow plus growth. And, frankly, I couldn't think of a transaction that's more compelling on cash flow. We've said we want to reduce our leverage, tick. We said we want to increase our cash flow, tick. We've said we wanted something that was compelling for dividends going forward, tick. We've said we wanted to grow our asset management arm. It certainly does that. It makes it a more significant part of the group. We said we want to have more of a digital platform and the addition of the significant friends customer base that we can utilise for that uh, digital platform is also a key part of it. We said we wanted a strong home base, so we can use that as a springboard to develop our other markets, markets like Poland and Turkey and Southeast Asia and China. Um, all these markets we've got some strong positions in, and this transaction makes us able to fund that growth. 
So this new Aviva of the future, thanks to Friends Life, is going to have the, the funds available for the international expansion that you were hoping to achieve, is that right? Well, again, we've been very clear of the challenges that we wanted to address over the medium term. We said we wanted to reduce leverage. Uh, clearly on completion, it puts us into our target range uh, immediately. We've said we wanted to increase cash flow. Cash flow in this case will be up around about 600 million pounds. We've said we wanted to get some synergies out of the business. And we've announced today 225 million of synergies. That clearly benefits both shareholders. And then on top of that, if you have a look at it, we've been very clear on the dividend policy today. Uh, both in terms of the Aviva dividend, that's a 30% increase to 18.1 pence. That's 30% in the final dividend. And then from a firm's perspective, you know, the special dividend is a compelling case for their shareholders as well as the premium. So um, it's dangerous to look at these transactions at just purely financial or just purely strategic. This one has both. There's been a lot of concern that the UK life market has actually, you know, it's, it's, it's weakening a little. It's not an area of strong growth at the moment. Is this something that concerns you from Aviva's point of view, Mark? No, not at all. The UK is an unbelievably good insurance market. It's secure, it's safe, the regulation is good. And you know what? It's got some areas of key growth. Pensions, for example, asset management, protection. These are all the things that our companies are great at, or together with the combined benefits, it's quite outstanding. Yeah, I mean, f first of all, it's, it's all about cash flow and growth. So combined, the group will have the largest back book in the UK. That's a strong cash generator. We'll have significant cost synergies and potential capital synergies as well. But then from a growth perspective, we'll be the biggest player in the corporate pensions market in the UK. That's a market that's expected to triple in size over the next decade. We'll have one in, uh, what, sorry, one in four maturing pensions in the UK market. Again, that's a market where the funds coming up to retirement are expected to triple over the next decade. So a British champion. And I guess, Andy, if you look at it, uh, when we look at all the customers we can bring over into our digital platforms so, uh, and uh, cross-selling into things like um, general insurance. And I guess you'd also look at asset management, wouldn't you? I mean. Uh, Friends Life has around about 100 billion of assets and we'd anticipate we could get, what, up to 70 billion of assets into our asset management arm. That's entirely consistent with the strategy as well. We've said we want to improve our asset management arm. This gives scale and it makes it a far more meaningful part of the group in terms of earnings. And what I would also add is Mark and I are completely aligned that UK orientated growth will be very disciplined. We're not interested in scale for the sake of it. It's all about driving profitability, value for our customers, value for our shareholders. Mark, let's talk about the synergies you referred to because when I hear synergies, other people might hear job losses. What is this going to mean for Aviva employees and for Friends Life employees? But Mark, starting with you. Well, when you do an integration, of course, there may be some job losses. But there's also a lot of areas that aren't related to jobs where you can get some of this cost out. So we're targeting, remember, £225 million of synergies. And if you look at that, you're going to get quite a big chunk out of insourcing the asset management. You'll get savings in terms of systems. For example, your pension systems, I think, is best in class. And so bringing uh, our pensions onto the Friends pension system is a great way to get some real savings. So there's a lot we can do. Uh, we need to do a lot more work in this. We need a lot of clarity on it. And we'll share that with our people as and when we do that work. I think all, all I'd add is two things. First of all, the approach we will take across the business will be very much best of both, be that people, platforms, products, and, and secondly, communication. So communication to our people, communications to our customers and distribution partners will be absolutely critical through this. Are we going to see a big rebranding exercise? We, we expect very much to lead with the Aviva brand, extremely strong brand in, in the marketplace. And for Friends Life customers, are they going to see names changing on the top of their letters? It, too early to, to work out the specific timing of that, but over time we would expect to move towards the Aviva brand. So what would your message to your partners and to your customers and brokers be? Well, I think um, from both the uh, Aviva and Friends companies, our customers and our people and our shareholders are going to be part of a stronger, more diversified, British champion and the proposition around that with a strong brand is absolutely compelling. I mean our customers clearly like a strong brand and they clearly like having those propositions. 
And this is one of those remarkable deals that seem to tick all the boxes. What would your message to your partners and brokers and consultants be? As we bring the two businesses together, our key philosophy is best of both. So as far as our uh, customers and distrib distribution partners are concerned, it'll be the best people, it'll be the best products and propositions, it'll be the best platforms, and combined that will be a very compelling proposition for our customers and distribution partners. Bringing two big companies like this together can be bumpy in the extreme. There hasn't been a great record on this kind of merger in the past. Tell me how you plan to overcome the challenges that integrating Aviva with Friends Life could bring. Well, integrating two big businesses obviously has its challenges, but I don't think it's helpful to look in the rear view mirror on this. I think what you can look at is the recent history of the two businesses. Friends Life has done an outstanding job simplifying the business down, simplifying the systems, bringing it together. And I think our recent track record over the last two years we put a target out to the market of saying we'd get £400 million of cost out of the business. Now, we've still got a period to go, and already we've announced to the market that we've taken £568 million out of the business. I think that track record probably speaks for itself. And then when you look at Andy and his team um, through all sorts of levels within the organisation, that was certainly one of the things that attracted us to friends. And it's two teams that are quite complementary. So they seem to be strong in the areas that we need more strength. And uh, I guess the same works in reverse. And uh, as Andy and I have been talking a lot about the best of both, and that's certainly the intention. Yeah. The, the fit is great. And, uh, and also one of the key questions with a big integration is, are you going to do it successfully? And it's been talked about in the media a fair bit. Uh, both organisations over the last two or three years have established a very good track record of this. So Aviva's UK life, life business has successfully reduced costs by 28%. And if we look at what we've done at uh, Friends Life Group, We've brought three businesses together within Friends Life Group. We've taken a third of the combined operating cost base out over the last three years. We've dramatically improved the profitability of the UK new business, and we've advanced nearly 300 million pounds of capital synergies for the benefit of shareholders. So both organizations have got track record of doing this well. And from a cultures and values point of view, do you feel that Friends Life is going to fit in well with Aviva? Yeah, I'm very confident as we bring the two organisations together and take the best of both, the, the culture of the combined organisation will, will lead to huge success. So if I can ask you to look into your crystal balls, gentlemen, you know, we looked five years down the path. How do you see this relationship then? How do you see the future? Mark? Well, I'm not sure my crystal ball's working quite, but, <laughs> but if you have a look at the two organisations, they're such a good fit. The proposition, both financially and strategically, for both sets of shareholders is so compelling. This is a transaction that the integration uh, is lower in complexity than would otherwise be the case. What I'd add to that, so completely agree in terms of the benefits for shareholders, also completely agree with the potential as a result of this transaction for the group, the enlarged group to be able to invest in some of the growth markets. But just coming back to one of the key benefits in the UK market, the level of under provision in the UK is, is, is huge. 30 years ago, you had seven people in the UK of working age to one person retired. 30 years from now, that seven to one becomes two to one. The UK desperately needs a British champion that's going to help more people make better provision for their financial futures. And in five years' time, that's what I would like the enlarged Aviva to be. Well, I wish you both the best of luck with it. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Katie.